Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com and what I wanted to do today was uh, go over stencil and svelte. Um, these are, well, I don't know if people like to call them frameworks, they're compilers, but you can use them to create web components and single page applications like you would with React View or Angular. So what I want to do this video is just kind of talk about how do you get started with them, but first let's just talk a little bit about more of what they are. So essentially what they do that's different than Angular uh, React and Vue is that you basically use their environment to program your components which or your whole application and then you compile it and it compiles it to standard JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. The benefit of that is the resulting, let's say you're building components, the, the resulting component can be used in a React project, a Vue project, or an Angular project. So you don't have to worry about um, frameworks in a sense. You don't have to worry about, oh, am I building this right for the right framework? Because if you're working in Angular Vue or if I make a React component, it won't work in Angular. And if I make an Angular component, it won't work in React uh, because they work differently and the code is kind of running real time. So it's got to be within that environment. But with Stencil and Svelte, again, it's all compiled to standard code that'll work anywhere. And on top of that, that makes it faster. So in, I think it's called like Lighthouse or Lightbox X testing, um, these came out on top far as uh, JavaScript ways of creating a single page application in, in, in JavaScript for speed. So while they're not the most used like Angular, Vue, and React because they're pretty new, uh, the fact that they can create framework agnostic web components that can be used in any project regardless of framework, and the fact that you can create a whole applications within them, I do think they're going to grow in popularity over the following years. And they're both pretty awesome. But these are, uh, the easiest way to get started is through Node.js. So if you haven't downloaded Node on your computer, you're going to go to nodejs.org, and you're going to download, um, if you're not someone who's going to want to worry about updating every once in a while, um, then get the long-term support version, okay? Um, that's always supported. That's why it's called long-term support. While, you know, when you download the current, there's like periodic releases that are fairly frequently. And then once they do a new release, they don't support the old release anymore. So if you really want something that's gonna be supported for longer than just that update schedule, then you want the long-term support. But you won't have all the newest features uh, up to the minute as you would in current. So that's kind of the trade-off between choosing long support, long-term support versus current for any kind of software package. So download whichever one you want to either Windows, Mac, or Linux. Just do what you gotta do, get it installed. Um, and then you'll be able to use node commands in your terminal. So if we're gonna get started with Stencil, okay, you can find the exact commands you need by clicking get started here at stenciljs.com. So you just click on get started and that'll take you to this page. And literally all you have to do is type this. Okay, this may or may not work depending. Um, if that doesn't work, then run this first. Okay, but usually you don't have to actually run this until after you do this. So this will help you start your project. Um, now, once you start your project, like most node packages or node templates, it doesn't install all the dependencies right away. So you're just gonna have to either run just npm install, which it should work for this because it'll have a package JSON file that'll have all that data. Um, but then you'll eventually have to run this right after you you run this, okay? But basically, when you run this, it's going to give you an option to, of three different sort of templates. Uh, template if you're just creating like a single component. So like if you just wanted to create a slider, you can slap into any project you have. You would just choose a component. If you're working within the Ionic framework, which is kind of designed to help make um, very mobile-oriented uh, progressive web applications which if you're not familiar with progressive web applications, the, think of the idea is you're making a mobile app that works from the browser. So it has the ability to like work offline and do things like that. Um, and pretty much has the feel of a mobile app, but it's running from your browser and is optimized towards a mobile browser uh, versus having to worry about some sort of app store and, and getting approved on the app store and the delays that an app store has and all that stuff. Okay, that's a whole discussion in itself. But if you wanted to do that, you, you have that template. Um, I usually just I usually create the whole website as a single page application, so I usually do this this the the app starter. Okay, and you'll have something that kind of looks like this. I'm using the text editor Atom. Uh, whether you're using Atom, Sublime, or Visual Code uh, Studio, it it all works. Okay, um, 
or via Visual Studio Code. Um, do, 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 do. Now, go to my stencil folder, just to show you an example. So this is sort of a portfolio page I made. Actually, let's use the blog one. This was a recent sort of like version of a blog that I made in stencil. Okay, and let me just pause this for a second so I can show you what the end result looks like. Okay, so basically this was the, the end result of Stencil. It's pretty close to sort of the, the standard out of the box. I just wanted to do a couple basic things. Um, basically, I was testing out all the different front-end frameworks to do basically just to kind of see how they make a component and how they kind of iterate over an API call. Okay, so basically I did an API call to call this headless blog I have from uh, Contentful. So if Contentful is a headless CMS, which means you would write your blog post, but it doesn't actually give you a page for your blog post you go get those posts via an API and create your own front end website. Um, so I called the blog post here. But basically this is the web page. This is built in stencil. You see, it's pretty fast. Okay. Um, but just to show you the code, when you go inside your um, stencil folder for your project, okay, you can do all your work in this source folder, which has assets, which are just basically your icons, pictures, stuff like that. Components is where you're gonna do most of your work because here's all your individual components. So if you're using the app starter, the way it works is that this app root uh, component is basically your front page. Okay, and it's gonna have something like this. And the way that Stencil is set up it's a little mix of Angular in the sense that it uses TypeScript and a little mix of React in the sense that it uses JSX. So essentially what happens is that every component is a class and the way it works is that the, before the class definition you'll have these little decorators to help decorate the component and at the very top of every component you're going to import what you need for the component. So in this case you're just taking component from the stencil core library and H which is going to be on every um, component okay and then you're going to use a decorator to define your tag so that's like this is going to be the app root tag which if we go to the index.html so it comes with this boilerplate html everything comes from this app root component which shows up as like an html tag in your index.html so what's inside that app root component well that's what's defined here so inside the when you export your class so if you're familiar with react this is very much like react you have, a, your rent, you have your render function, which returns the JSX, which is really just HTML inside of your JavaScript class. Okay, and just like React, basically everything has to be within sort of one parent tag. So, if, so basically, literally JSX works, I would say 90% the same as React here. So if you're familiar with React, this is gonna be very comfortable. Um, it does have a different, its own built-in router. So basically here on the front page, you have this router tag that slots in the route, the stencil route switch, which is kind of defi defines the area where the routes are defined. And then it defines all the different routes. So saying, okay, when someone goes to the root route, you're gonna bring up this component. And when you bring up this route profile, and the idea is that in this area here, right here where this, this area here technically is where that component's gonna show up. So depending on what the route is or what the URL is, this area in this HTML file is gonna be swapped out with this component. So you could make multiple routers that can switch out the components depending on the URL and have all sorts of really fun, crazy looking stuff. But this is just basically defining a page header and then using the body. But I mean, theoretically you could have multiple routers and have different parts switch depending on the URL to different components and mix and match and go crazy with it. But that's essentially what that does. Now, notice that the root route, which is where the website's gonna start, goes to the app home component. So then we have to go over here and take a look at the app home component, which is right over here. And again, each of these component folders come with four files. And the only really two files you really care about is the CSS, which defines the CSS for that component, and the app root TSX. And it's called TSX because it's a TypeScript file using JSX, so TSX for TypeScript and JSX. Okay, unlike just a straight TS file, which is just TypeScript. Okay, and then you have these two files, which are for testing. 
which I'm not going to get into here. But if you don't plan on doing any using any of the testing features, then these files don't matter. Cool. Okay. But if I go there, then app home is really just another page. And then app profile is just another page that goes through the two routes. But if I go to app home, again, that's the, the main page. Again, same thing here. I just define the tag name up at the top, what the CSS file is. But notice that if we want the link to another stencil page or you take advantage of the stencil router, we put the link here in the stencil route link tag. Then there's a button in between it that makes this blog post button a link to the component that's defined under profile URL, which is app profile. And then again, here we define that component, which here we use a lifecycle method component will load, which means it's going to do this function when the component loads on the screen. Okay. Which that's what fetches my, my, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? my my API call. Okay, and then I store that in a state variable, which unlike React, where you define your state in an object, here you actually use a decorator to define your state. So I'm defining this state variable, which is known as posts. Okay, and then which is an array. So using TypeScript, so you get to define the type of all your different state variables, which is an array that takes anything inside of it but I end up pushing that into the array. And then just like JavaScript in React, or I mean React JSX, I just use the map um, array function to map my, my, to iterate over my data. Okay, the reason being is that they technically what I'm doing is I'm creating an array of HTML elements. And then that gets displayed or fills in right here. Okay, and then again, you can define your interpolated variables just like React's JSX using a single curly bracket. So basically, whenever you see these curly brackets, it's saying, hey, the stuff inside these curly brackets is not normal HTML, it's like JavaScript. So we're going to treat it like a JavaScript function or a variable, pull it as a variable from the variables that are accessible. And again, I can define my variables up here. And since this variable is called state, I have to make sure I bring in state. So if you want to use state, or properties or props like like in JavaScript react um, you would define that up here so in this case I'm only using state so I bring in state if I were using props too I'd also have to type in props but essentially this is how JSX works flow works flow is it's very similar to react we have all sort of all these component folders um, and very similar to react where you have the, the the JSX and it's pretty straightforward and then when you're done you just run build and it builds out and compiles your code and then puts it in this www folder which literally is just ready to go and deploy so that's how stencil works now let's talk about svelte okay um let me go back to over here okay oh wrong one here we go now with svelte i created another version sort of the same project again just you know iterating over my blog so this is the same blog, just using Svelte, okay? And then you get started with Svelte, you just go to your Node terminal, or you just your terminal in general, after you installing Node, and you're gonna run these four commands. Okay, now NPX is a special prefix for NPM commands for running like one-time things. So you're like, you're not gonna install this, but you wanna use it. So NPX digit, which is just a thing that Svelte uses to install templates, Svelte JS template, and then you just put the name of your project. And then it'll create a project inside that folder. We'll change directories into that folder, do npm install so that way it installs all the dependencies, and then npm run dev, and then you can start uh, building out. Now, Svelte kind of has a, a workflow that's more similar to Vue. So while Stencil had was very similar to a mix of Angular and React, uh, Svelte is going to feel a lot like Vue in the sense where everything is kind of in one file for each component. So let's go over to my Svelte folder. There's the blog source code. So again, once again, you're gonna start from your source code is really where all your work's gonna be done. Okay, and then basically you have all these like config folders that you can use to kind of config, config certain things. Okay, really, they don't need to be touched. 
okay? But here in the source folder, what you do is you have not just like a whole folder with a bunch of different files for each component, but you only have one Svelte file. Okay, so you have your app Svelte, which is sort of your where the, the whole program starts. Okay, and then basically the structure of each component file is really just a script tag where you put all your JavaScript, which you always have to make sure you import any, if you're using another component from another Svelte file, you have to import it. The cool thing is you don't have to, you don't have to export it. So usually you think, okay, if I'm gonna import something from one JavaScript file, I have to, if I'm gonna import something, I have to export it. You don't have to, it just works. It's felt this, because it's compiled. So this felt compiler just realizes, hey, you're importing this from this file, let me just go grab it. Okay, so literally it's just, you have three, three, ta three tags. So you put all your uh, JavaScript there. Then you have your HTML which could be any tag, it doesn't have to be a main tag, but the idea is that it's always one parent tag with a bunch of stuff in there, kind of like JSX. And then a style tag for all your CSS. That's it, okay? So literally you're just doing your standard CSS, HTML, and JavaScript in one file, very similar to Vue without, with a lot less of the config in the script. Like in Vue, you have a lot of like configuring variables and configuring certain features inside the script tag, you don't have to do that so much here. You just make variables and it works, um, which is really nice. Okay, so like this is the this is the component for like getting the blog post. Okay, so here I have the div tag. Okay, but instead of using like map, using a standard JavaScript function to iterate over the data, they have a built-in way of iterating, which is kind of similar to Angular, which they have like the ng, repeat here it's but it's this one's really simple each which is what stands stands for the beginning of the loop and it's for every post in posts or basically actually here you're doing this is the collection and then for each route the the name of that individual item in the collection is post it's a little bit backwards is when you usually think it was like post in post in like javascript when you do like a for of loop okay so you put it each here Okay, and then you have a each here. And then you can put an else in case for some reason there's no post. So if there was no post, it would just do this instead. Okay, and then just, that's really simple. Okay, but that's all in the HTML piece. And then in my script tag, the only thing I have to import is this on mount piece because I want to do my API call when the component mounts. So that's like their version of a lifecycle. Um, I just, I don't have to call, use the word state or use the word props. I just call the variable, call it, just create it, and then uh, go get my data. Now here I use async await, simple. Okay, and then just a little bit of styling, done. And then when I'm done, similar to stencil, I'll just put in the build command into npm, and it'll turn out something here in the public folder that I can go out and deploy. Okay, so that's, so Svelte and Stencil are really simple. As you can see, Svelte is extremely simple to get started with, um, which is why I think it's growing in popularity so quickly. But I really like them both. They both create really quick uh, results. Their documentation is pretty good for reading, but this gives you more of a feel for what the workflow is, hopefully, and just sort of like what it's gonna look like to get started. You're not gonna like, hope this video isn't gonna teach you everything about how to use them, but now I think you have an idea of what they are like. And hopefully this gives you a better idea to get started and how to use them. If you want to use them to create a whole application or create a component to use in your Angular React Vue application. Um, but again, my name is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com. If you like this video, subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you like this video, join my uh, Slack channel. Go head over to alexmercedcoder.com and you can meet other developers and network, show off your portfolio, uh, make connections, all sorts of good stuff but you can go do that all over there at alexmercedcoder.com. You guys have a great day and enjoy.